Esteemed colleagues, uh, welcome to this media briefing by the Acting Chief Justice uh, Zondo. Uh, we are going to start right away. At the end of his briefing, we will allow some few colleagues from the media to ask questions. We will request that when you do ask questions, please introduce your names, your full names, and the media house that you represent. We are going to start. May I ask that we all uh, keep our selves muted until we are given an opportunity to speak. ACJ, I'm going to hand over to you right away. We may start. Thank you very much, Nati. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the media. Thank you very much for making time to uh, join us for this uh, media briefing, which uh, was at short notice. I'm grateful that you are able to join us. The purpose of this media briefing is for me to deal with an article that has appeared, that has been published, which to Ms. Lindy Wesisulu, which uh, attacks the judiciary and, in fact, insults the judiciary. The part of the article that I wish to draw attention to are the following, and I'm going to read, and I quote, the most dangerous African today is the mentally colonized African. And when you put them in leadership positions, or as interpreters of the law, they are worse than your oppressor. I pause there to say, everyone knows that interpreters of the law are judges. And I continue and I quote, they have no African inspired ideological grounding some are confused by foreign belief systems. In America, these interpreters are called the house Negroes. It is what the father of black history, Carter Woodson strenuously complained about in his famous book, the miseducation of the Negro. Woodson wrote, and Ms. Lindu, Lindu S. Sulu quotes, if you control a man's thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him to stand here or go yonder he will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his special benefit. I stop here for now and say, Mr. Sulu, quotes these words from this book to describe the interpreters of the law who are judges. And she continues in her article and says, and I quote, when it comes to crucial economic issues and property matters, the same African causes up with their elitist colleagues to sing from the same hymn book, spouting the Roman Dutch law 
of property. But where is the indigenous law? It has been reduced to a footnote in your law schools. Where are the African value systems and customs of land, wealth, and property? Today, in the high echelons of our judicial system, are these mentally colonized Africans who have settled with the worldview and mindset of those who have dispossessed their ancestors. They are only too happy to lick the spittle of those who falsely claim superiority. The lack of confidence that permeates their rulings against their own speaks very loudly, while others, secure in their agenda, clap behind closed doors. I pause here to emphasize that the reference in this article to the high echelons of our judicial system, where Ms. Sisulu says, you are to find in, I quote, these mentally colonized Africans who have settled with the worldview and mindset of those who have dispossessed their ancestors must include the Constitutional Court, the high echelons of our judicial system. She must be talking, among others, about the judges of the Constitutional Court who are Africans. I think she would also be including the judges of the Supreme Court of Appeal who are Africans. I think she also includes judges president of the various courts and all judges of the high courts of the various divisions of the high court. This is what Mrs. Sulu says about the African judges. She continues and I quote, there is a need for an overhaul of a justice system that does not work for Africa and Africans. If the law does not sufficiently address the issue of the food fight, the law will fail and inevitably it will play out in the streets. We have a neoliberal constitution with foreign inspiration, but who are the interpreters? And where is the African value system of this constitution and the rule of law? If the law does not work for Africans in Africa, what is the use of the rule of law? Close quotes. I just want to say that we as the judiciary have never said that we should not be criticized. We do not say even now that we should not be criticized. We accept that we may be criticized, but we say criticism should be fair and should have a proper factual basis. But 
this is not criticism. It is an insult to the justices of the Constitutional Court, the judges of the Supreme Court of Appeal, the judges president of the various divisions of the High Court, and all the African judges who serve this country with distinction, with determination to uphold the Constitution. A very important aspect that arises when you read Mrs. Sulu's article, particularly the portions that I have quoted, which attack and insult African judges, is that it is rich in insult, but very poor in substantiation and in any analysis because one, it does not refer to any judgments that judges of the Constitutional Court, judges of the Supreme Court of Appeal and judges of the High Courts have given, which have been analyzed in order to produce the conclusions that she produces. There are no facts which are put up by Mrs. Sulu to support what she is saying. There is no analysis of anything. It's just accusations insults to the judiciary. This is most regrettable because this is not something that comes from some young person who is inexperienced and might not know what is expected. This comes from a senior member of the ruling party. It comes from a senior member of parliament. It comes from a senior member of the executive. As far as I'm aware, Mrs. Sulu has been in parliament since either 1994 or from the, sometime during the 90s. And she has been a member of the executive under different presidents over a long time. That such a senior member who serves in two of the arms of the state, namely parliament and the executive, should see fit to insult the justices of the Constitutional Court the judges of the Supreme Court of Appeal and judges of the high courts, particularly African judges, because she focuses on them, is most regrettable. I would have expected at least that if she held the views that she holds here, she would at least have some facts to back up what she is saying. And I don't think she has those facts because if she did have those facts, there is no reason why she would not have put them up because then her allegations and opinions would 
be seen to be based on some facts. But here there are no facts. Based on some facts. It, is, it would, should not be acceptable in a constitutional democracy such as ours that a member of parliament and a member of the executive should wake up one morning without any facts, just write an article and insult all African judges from the highest court in the land. Supreme Court of Appeal, various divisions of the high court and specialist courts, everybody. It should not be acceptable. It is very important that in this country, we draw the line on conduct that is acceptable and conduct that is unacceptable. As I said, we as the judiciary do not say we should not be criticized. But criticism should have a proper basis but as I said earlier, this is not criticism. This is an insult. Mrs. Sulu has insulted us. And we as the judiciary have done nothing other than doing our job. We take the oath that guides our work. We take that oath seriously. Mr. Sulu might not like some of the decisions we make, but we take that oath seriously and the judiciary will continue to do its work in accordance with the oath of office that we take. If some people don't like it, don't like the decisions we take in accordance with that oath, that is their problem. We will not change that. We will continue to perform our functions in accordance with our oath of office. If that brings about the kinds of insults that Mrs. Sulu has heaped on us, we will not change. We will still continue and do our job the way we are required to do it in accordance with our oath of office. I've looked at all the statements and sentences here that I've read, as I've said, there is no substantiation of any of this. There's no attempt to put up any facts to substantiate this. There is no attempt to refer to any judgments or anything that the judiciary has done which demonstrates what she's talking about. On Judiciary Day, one of the things I said was that I expect that as we move on, there will be more attacks on the judiciary and that the judiciary must be ready for these attacks. It seems to me that hardly a month or about a month after Judiciary Day, Mr. Sulu has launched a completely unwarranted attack on the judiciary and has heaped insults 
on the judiciary. We cannot tell the other arms of state, parliament, and the executive what to do when one of them does what Mr. Sulu has done. It is up to them to decide what to do. But I want to say, I find this conduct on the part of a senior member of the ruling party, a senior member of parliament, a senior member of the executive, completely unacceptable. And it would be a pity if it was allowed to stand just like that. I want to say to my colleagues in the Constitutional Court, um, judges in the SCA, judges president, and the whole leadership of the judiciary, and all judges in our courts, particularly African judges who have been insulted by Ms. Sulu, continue to do your work in accordance with your oath of office, no matter what. No amount of attacks or insults should sway you to making decisions in any manner other than in accordance with your oath of office. More attacks may be on their way against us, but we must continue to do our work in accordance with our constitution and the people of South Africa are the ones who will judge us. Our judgments will speak for us. And other people in our country who appreciate the role of the judiciary and who appreciate the constitution and the rule of law will play their role when to protect the judiciary against these types of attacks. The attack and the insults by Ms. Sisulu has no factual basis or justification whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Chief Justice. Colleagues, um, this is the opportunity for you to pose a few questions. As requested, please raise your hand and introduce yourself in full um, so that we can deal with the questions. Try to be brief, uh, we don't have enough time. I think we've allocated 30 minutes. I have noted Mr. Sempier, I've noted Mr. Manyatela. I see Noguka and I'm not sure which media house she represents in Siavuya in that order. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and apologies for the problem that uh, that erupted a bit earlier on. Um, good afternoon, Acting Chief Justice as well. Just a quick one Hello, on the, uh, just a quick one on the um, statement by the by the minister and your response to it. When the president appeared before the State Capture Commission of Inquiry and there was questions around the deployment committee of the ANC, the president made reference to the transformation of the judiciary. What's your understanding of what the president was speaking about when he spoke about the transformation of the judiciary? And then just a final one, the NPA issued a statement a bit earlier on. I don't know whether um, you have been informed or you know of special courts that are being set up to deal with state capture. Thank you so much. Uh, th thank you, Aldrian. <clears throat> Well, uh, when the president spoke about uh, transformation, I think he spoke about transformation as we, we have uh, understood it over the years. 
uh, is a um, uh, transformation of the judiciary, not just of the of um, uh, gender and uh, race, but also in order to make sure that uh, uh, the that women, for example, and black judges get access to all kinds of branches of law to which they may not have been, uh, they may not have had access before. Uh, that that's that's what 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 he's talking about. Uh, I don't think it has any connection at all with what uh, Miss Sisulu uh, is saying. Uh, we must remember that uh, in South Africa for the past, what, 27 years now, 20, uh, since 94, we have a system of appointment of judges, which is very transparent. And uh, the Judicial Service Commission um, con has, among others, members of parliament who sit in that uh, commission it's got uh, uh, at least one member of the executive, the Minister of Justice. It's got some judges and the members of parliament come from different uh, political parties and they include the NCOP and the National Assembly. And when they select um, candidates for appointment, one of the factors they have to take into account is ensuring that the judiciary is representative. So these various uh, interest groups and political parties have a role to play in the appointment of judges and they play that role. So, so, so I don't think that the president was talking about the same thing as, uh, as Mr. Sulu. And uh, with regard to uh, the NPA, uh, I haven't uh, uh, seen uh, much. I did see, I think, something along the lines that there's a special task team um, that uh, they are putting together for purposes of uh, um, prosecutions arising from the report of the commission, but I don't have uh, much in terms of information as yet on that. I hope I, I answered those questions. No, I just wanted to ask on the special courts. Yes. Because the statement makes reference to special courts on state capture. And as the head of the judiciary, I think you would or should know about that. Well, I, I, I don't know as yet, but I, I think when they're talking about that, they, they would not be talking about the building of new uh, physically building courts they would probably be talking about arrangements that would be made in the various parts of the country with uh, uh, various divisions of the high court or magistrate court to make sure that these cases are expedited. That, that's what I, I have in mind, but I, I haven't had anybody discuss that with me, but I think that probably that's what they have in mind, simply that they would talk to um, uh, the relevant leadership of the judiciary at different levels to say, can we make special arrangements for these matters? I think that's what probably they have in mind. Thank, Thank you, you CJ. Um, yes. Mr. Manyatela. Uh, thank you, Nati. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Acting uh, Chief Good Justice. afternoon, Mr. Manyatela. Good afternoon. Yeah, Clement here from 702. Yeah. I think there's no doubt, Acting Chief Justice, for many people that this attack on the judiciary by the minister was unwarranted. But I would like to know, is this the appropriate way to respond as the office of the Chief Justice? And I'm asking this because there are many people that have criticized the justices, that have criticized the judiciary, whether through press briefings, whether through opinion pieces, and there are still many others that are going to do so that are even senior within the ANC or any other political party. Um, I know in the past, the former Chief Justice Mokweng Mokweng, I remember attending a briefing in around 2015 where he had called a meeting 
with the then president Jacob Zuma because there were ministers and senior leaders of the ANC that were criticizing the judiciary unfairly without substantiating and giving the facts, as you have indicated with regards to this criticism by Minister Lindy Wesusulu. Why have you decided as the Office of the Chief Justice to hold an entire briefing because one senior leader of the ANC has now decided to have the views that she has about the judiciary? Uh, couldn't you have written to the president and say, let's sit down, I'm concerned about members of the executive and then leave it to him to take whatever appropriate action? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manyatela. Well, one, uh, the judiciary is independent and uh, we will deal with these matters uh, independently of the executive. If and when we think there is a need for a discussion with the executive, uh, that can be looked at. If you remember when, uh, I think it was, may have been 2015 or 2016, when there was a meeting between the senior leaders of the judiciary and uh, uh, the president, then President Zuma, and uh, some of the members of the executive, that occurred after there had been, as far as I recall, after there had been um, a constant attacks on the judiciary, uh, which had been going on. That, 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 that was the context. Uh, in this case, um, there is this attack by Mr. Sulu. You know, some of the criticisms that we get, we, we don't even respond, uh, respond to. We, we, we allow either because uh, we accept that maybe that, that, that may be fair criticism or it doesn't really warrant us responding or in some, case, in some cases, uh, we respond because there's a special reason why we feel we should respond. In this case, uh, the re particular reason for responding is the insult, as opposed to even just the criticism of the insult. Uh, but in terms of meeting with the president and so on, that is something that we would decide at a certain stage. As I say, in 2015 or 2016, that meeting was called because there were continuing constant attacks on the judiciary. So for, for this one, I um, uh, at this stage, am, am happy that I deal with it in this way. Uh, what the executive or what the president is going to do, uh, he will decide. As I say, we can't uh, instruct him or uh, instruct him what to do. We can't tell them what to do. We can't tell parliament what to do when a senior member of parliament behaves in this way, but we, we have a right to say, this is completely unacceptable and it's an insult to judiciary and it should not be allowed to happen. Thank you, Acting Chief Justice. Mr. Sempia, your hand is still up. I would request that colleagues, please lower your hands when you're done. Um, and secondly, uh, the Acting Chief Justice is addressing the media today as the head of the judiciary not as the chairperson of the uh, State Capture Commission. So I would request that uh, we don't uh, conflate and confuse issues. Uh, he's addressing the issue relating to the article, and I would like us to focus on what he has said today or anything related to that too. Uh, Ms. Nogukanya, um, and then Siavuya. Thanks, Nati. Hi, everyone. Nogukanya Mdambu here from Jakarta. Hello, Nogukanya. Afternoon, ACJ. Um, just a few from me. Uh, in terms of engagement, have you had the opportunity to engage directly with Mr. Sulu on these utterances? Um, I mean, it's good and it's all good and well to to skip all the way to the president and hope that he takes some sort of action. But if she has the agency to write the letter, surely she has the agency as well to account for herself. My second one is in the face of these continued attacks on the judiciary, what's your assessment of them? Do you think that it's a, it's a, um, the judiciary being pulled in as a pawn in political games, also taking into consideration um, and context, sorry, Nati, I'm just gonna draw this one, this quick one. Um, the, the last week's attack 
where the judiciary, the, the concourt windows were smashed in. What, what exactly is going on here and what's your assessment of these attacks? And then my last one, um, linking to the first one really and about how the executive should deal with this conduct. What recourse are you then hoping for? Would you be satisfied with a simple apology on her utterances? If not, what recourse then uh, are you hoping will come from, from, from this? Thank you. Thank you. Maybe let me start with the last one. At this stage, we hope that uh, she would have uh, the decency to withdraw the insult that she has held at the African judges. Uh, with regard to the uh, attack on the Concord building last week, uh, that matter is in court. I understand that there are investigations which are ongoing. It's a matter of grave concern to me. And uh, I know that uh, the Secretary General of the Office of the Chief Justice as well as other stakeholders, particularly in the security cluster, are looking into the matter because we need to make sure that measures are put in place to make sure that this doesn't happen again. With regard to whether I've engaged with Mrs. Sulu, the answer is no, I have not engaged with her. Uh, she didn't uh, engage with the judiciary before she uh, wrote the article. So we are responding to what she, she has said. We find it completely unacceptable. And uh, uh, there is no plan to engage with her uh, unless she uh, engages, she wishes to engage with us and maybe explain herself or withdraw and uh, apologize for what I see certainly as something completely unacceptable. I hope I've answered all the questions, but there may be one that I may have missed, uh, but I, I hope I've answered them. Thank you, uh, ACJ. Uh, Mr. Siavoya? Uh, hi, Nati, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, hi, DCJ. Um, Hello, Siavoya. Hi, DCJ. Um, it's uh, William Zanzi here from the Cape Times. Uh, DCJ, I'm just curious about what your response to um, to um, um, Minister Lee seeks to achieve. I think a point has been made by a colleague about whether this is the appropriate platform um, to raise this issue. Um, so I'm curious, what do you seek to achieve with this kind of response when there have been a number of articles some more than critical um, than, 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 than what she has penned um, about the judiciary. And <clears throat> unfortunately, there's never been a response um, to, this, to this effect. So the long and short of my question is, what do you seek to achieve by this, um, by this response? And the last question I want, to, I want to, um, to pose to you is in an election year, <clears throat> a fact that you are also well, well aware of um, where campaigns will be flying in and out um, uh, for the ruling party. Um, um, uh, are, you not, are you not entering uncharted waters? Are you not setting a precedent of entering uncharted waters where we know that there's, be a lot of, uh, there's gonna be a lot of electioneering towards the ANC's elective conference in December where remarks and um, some severe will be made about everything that exists in this country. Are you not entering uncharted waters by doing this, um, considering you know, what is to come in the next coming months? Thank you very much. Thank you, Siafia. Well, we, firstly, we want to make it clear that this is unacceptable what she has done. We hope that uh, she can reflect on what, miss, what she has done and withdraw, but uh, that would be her decision. But it's important that we make it clear and go on record as to what we find completely unacceptable uh, in terms of conduct by a senior member of both parliament and the executive. We, we don't always respond, 
uh, you have said yourself that there, there, there are other cases where the judiciary has been criticized and we didn't respond. Yes, that is that is true. We would not be able to do our work if we responded to everything. We have to weigh and assess each and every one. And there are uh, cases where we will not say anything when we are criticized. I've, I have explained that. But for me, it is difficult for me to think of any occasion in the past when a senior member of both parliament and the executive insulted the judiciary in the way in which Mrs. Sulu has. Um, my, my, my recollection is that this is probably uh, the worst insult that has been leveled against the judiciary. And I leave out criticism. I say this is not just criticism. It is an insult. Uh, well, in terms of this being an election year, by which I understand you to be referring to the fact that the ruling party will have its elections in at the end of the year, we 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 are comfortable to say. Uh, where criticism is uh, substantiated and criticism is fair, we, 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 we won't be seeking to respond all the time. We'll res reserve a response to certain situations where the judiciary is criticized completely unjustifiably and certainly where it is insulted. So, we 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 are we we are quite uh, we have no problem with hearing that some people are not happy with the, the judiciary or they criticize, but there will come a time where we believe somebody has crossed the line, and in this case, we think I certainly think Miss Sesulu has crossed the line. Thank you, ACJ. ACJ, we are going to take the last round. We've gone over the 30 minutes, but before yes. we go to the last round, I have two written questions that I've received. One is from yeah. Jay Davis, and it reads as thus, does ACJ Zondo know whether Ms. Sisulu wrote the article herself or was it someone else? Let, let me respond to that quickly. Yes. Uh, the article has been out in the public for about five days from what I see. Uh, it uh, purports to be coming from, to be written by her. She has not, as far as I know, come out and uh, said it's not written by her. So we take it that uh, she wrote the article. The second question comes from Mr. Tabo Makwakwa of the Daily News. It reads as follows. Is the DCJ not playing into a political gallery when it begins to respond uh, to media political opinions by politicians or any other citizen of this country? Judge President Thorpe, during an interview with the Inside Factor, had also raised the fact that the judiciary needed to be transformed to speak to issues affecting Black Africans. He said that he would have transformed the judicial system had he been uh, chief justice of the country. What does DCJ make of those remarks? Well, let me start with the first one. No, I, I'm not playing into the political gallery. Uh, I made it quite clear that I'm responding to the insults directed at the judiciary. I'm not responding uh, to any other thing that uh, she may be talking about. That's what I'm concerned about. Uh, so other matters, political matters, um, I'm not going to go into those, but this one that relates to the judiciary, that's the one I'm dealing with. Uh, well, I don't think it's necessary for me to 
say anything about uh, what Judge President Schroeper may have said and what he may or may not have done uh, if he, he was in whatever position. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, as a head of court, as is the uh, position with all heads of court, one of the things we have been continuing to do is to advance transformation in the different courts. That process is ongoing. Thank you. Thank you very much. The second round, which hopefully would be the last ACJ, Yes. Uh, I'm going to, uh, Ms. Dokanya, please lower your hand. I'm going to take Ms. Uh, Mo, Ms. Mon, Ms. Bates, uh, Ms. Wicks. Those are the three hands that I see. I hope I haven't missed anyone else in that order for now. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Oh, and, and lastly, sorry, 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 Ms. Mon. And, and lastly, yeah. uh, Kyle Cowett. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, um, ACJ. Hi, First of all, I know, your, I know your focus is very much on the judiciary, but um, you know, they were in that piece, there were also very strident attacks on the constitution and a conflation of the constitution with Jim Crow laws, apartheid mm. laws, and the mm. laws of the Nazis. There, were mm. also, there was also a question about the value of rule of law in South Africa. Yeah. Um, yes. I would just be interested um, in your opinions on that. Um, yeah. Secondly, the timing of this coming just, and I know you are here as the acting CJ, but coming just a few days after the inquiry had released that very far-reaching report, which makes you know, very um, strong uh, findings about endemic corruption under the ANC government in this country. Um, mm. Do you feel that there, you know, obviously Mr. Sulu in responses to myself has denied um, that there was anything in the timing of it, but what do you make of it? And then finally, you yourself have experienced scenarios where um, a bullet was fired through the window of your, you know, the, the, the state capture inquiries offices. You yourself have been targeted on social media. There have been threats. You have a number of bodyguards. When public officials come out in this way and essentially put a target on the back of black judges as being tools of white masters, what does it do to you know, the constitutional democracy that so many people fought and died for? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Karin. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the courts are very, fundamental to our constitutional democracy for many reasons. One of which is that the citizens and all people must know that when there are disputes, whether it's disputes among citizens between citizens or disputes between citizens and the government, they go to the court, they take those disputes to the courts and the courts would resolve them. For people to do that, they need to have confidence in the courts. They need to have confidence in the judiciary, that the judiciary would resolve their disputes in accordance with the constitution and the law. So when an attack such as this or insult such as this that Mr. Sulu has held on the on the, on the judiciary are made. The question would arise, why should people bring their disputes to judges who fit this description that uh, she gives? I don't know what answer she would uh, give if somebody approached her and say, Mrs. Solo, why, what do you say to people if they approach you as a member of parliament and as a senior member of cabinet and say, should we take our disputes to courts in the light of what you have said about the judges, particularly black uh, judges? It's difficult for me to think that she would be able to say, yes, I'm encouraging you to take those disputes to 
to the courts which uh, have those judges. And if that can, if she can't say that, what is she going to say? People will then say, well, we will resolve these disputes through violence. Is it tenable for a senior member of the executive and member of parliament to say these kinds of things about the judiciary in circumstances where she is under an obligation as a member of parliament and as a member of the executive to encourage the citizens and people to take their disputes to courts and not to resort to violence to resolve disputes. So by insulting the judiciary and black judges in particular in this way, she is creating a situation where some citizens might well say, we are not taking our disputes to the courts. And in fact, they might have less respect for courts and their orders because she says, these black judges are basically puppets of their masters. It's completely unacceptable. Um, she has questioned the rule of law. As a member of parliament, as a member of the executive, Mrs. Sulu has taken an oath to uphold the constitution, to respect it and to protect it. And part of our constitution is the rule of law. She seems to question it. I don't know whether she is still prepared to uphold the constitution because upholding the constitution and respecting it includes upholding the rule of law and respecting the rule of law. Uh, thank you, Karim. Thank you, ACJ. Ms. Bates? Thank you very much. Just a note, I prefer to go by Ms. Bates, <laughs> but let's get into <laughs> the questions, please. Uh, so Aaron Bates here from Business Day. Afternoon, Acting Chief Justice. Good and afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you. You've referred specifically in, in the beginnings of your address to Carter Woodson's term for slaves who worked in their oppressors' homes. Was it this specific insult, which I'm loath to quote, but is essentially Minister Sisulu calling judges house Negroes, what triggered today's speech? Secondly, you're speaking today as acting head of the judiciary. Was this address your decision alone, or did you consult with your peers in the apex court or the judiciary more broadly? Thirdly, you mention rising attacks on the judiciary and constitution, and you see this column as an example. Is your personal safety as the most senior judge at present at risk? Do you have evidence of this? And finally, are you worried and have you considered that today's address, I think you being the most bold you've ever been in public, could jeopardize your chances as becoming the permanent appointee of Chief Justice? Thank you very much. Uh, th 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 thank you. Did you say you prefer Miss Bates or Erin Erin Bates? I prefer <laughs> Miss over Miss. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, let me start with the last one. As acting Chief Justice, I have certain responsibilities, and those responsibilities must be carried out. If, me, if carrying those responsibilities out means that I am uh, reducing my chances of being appointed as Chief Justice, that's fine. I, 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 I don't have to, I, I will never not do my job just because I want to be appointed as Chief Justice. So I have absolutely no doubt that uh, 
this is what I needed to do. That's, that's point number one. Point, uh, point number two, I did consult with the heads of court as well as, um, as uh, the, uh, my colleagues on the Constitutional Court. Um, and uh, uh, the feeling was that this attack is totally unacceptable and that it should be addressed. Um, I think you asked a number of questions, but I think I've responded to two. I, di I didn't write all of them down, uh, Erin. Yes, uh, thank you, ACK. Uh, the other two uh, were effectively the minister has, and I am wary of using this term because it is so loaded, but it is in the column. She's effectively called judges house Negroes. Was it this specific comment that really pushed you to speak today? Is that the, the nub of, uh, of the kind of the grievance here, especially since we know that a, a former president, a cabinet member and the, the head of cabinet has, has been very critical of the judiciary. Uh, and actually sanctioned in an apex court judgment. So that's the first one. And the, the, the last one then is- Maybe let uh, me answer your... that one. Maybe let I me answer that one. Safety. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe let me answer that one. Well, put it this way, I, I took into account the entire article and, um, and, and sought to say what comes out of it. And uh, that part of that passage had its own role as well to play. But I took into account the entire article and said, what comes out of it when you have regard to this article in its totality? And I found it uh, to be completely unacceptable and to uh, cross the line. Thank you. The other one. Thank you. Last, last and final one, I appreciate it. Is your personal safety at increased risk because you have noted increased attacks on the judiciary and is there evidence of, uh, um, to quote a colleague, a red mark on your back? Um, look, at this stage, uh, I am I'm not aware of any increased uh, risk as such, but I am keeping an eye and open eyes on what is happening. And uh, I know a lot of people have sent messages since the release of the report, uh, concerned about my safety. Um, I uh, have not seen anything that uh, is new. Uh, uh, but we will see as as as, the, as time goes on. Uh, I, I I I am careful, but of course, when it comes to what I need to do in terms of my job, I will do it without fear, without favor, and without prejudice. That is the bottom line, and um, and and yeah, that 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 is the position. Thank you. Thank you, ACJ. Uh, apologies, Aaron. Allow me to call you that from now on. Uh, we move on to Ms. Wicks and uh, Mr. Cowan. Um, thanks, Nati. It's Bernadette Wicks from The Citizen. Afternoon, ACJ. Um, Hi, afternoon. Um, so, ACJ, the way you've been speaking about this piece today, um, saying that it goes past the point of criticism, calling it um, insulting, um, saying how it's unsubstantiated, to a lay person at least, it seems to suggest that there might be grounds for a charge of scandalizing the court, like I say, to a lay person. Could you give me your thoughts on, on this? Do you believe that there might be grounds? Is the leadership of the judiciary looking into potentially um, charging the minister? Thank you. Thank you. No, we are not looking at, at that, uh, at, at certainly at this stage. And uh, we, oh, I certainly hope that uh, other sections of society uh, will also uh, raise their concerns about uh, this. And we will uh, monitor the situation and see how, uh, what happens after now. But at this stage, certainly we, we are not looking at uh, uh, charging the minister. 
Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Cowan. Uh, good afternoon, Acting Chief Justice Ondo. Good, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kyle Cowan. I work for News24. So very briefly, just to wrap up, um, the courts weathered the state capture storm as many other government institutions were not able to do. I wonder how you view these escalating attacks on the judiciary now through the prism of state capture. Do you believe that those remnants of state capture are now coming out when the day of accountability is nigh to try and discredit the judiciary to further escape accountability? And then lastly, so how did this article make you feel personally as a black South African man? What would you say to Minister Susulu if she had expressed these views to you over a cup of tea? Thank you. That, thank you. Well, if she had expressed these views to me over a cup of tea, I certainly would have realized that uh, she shouldn't have had a cup of tea with me in the first place. Um, I, uh, I was horrified when I read uh, this article about what uh, somebody who is part of two arms of the state, somebody who has been in parliament for many years, somebody who has been a minister for many years and somebody who is very senior in the ruling party could say about the judiciary. I, I've never thought that uh, anybody who is part of those uh, uh, structures could say something like this about the judiciary and about black judges. So it, 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 it was very shocking uh, to, to, to me. Um, have I answered both questions? Uh, no, sir. The, the, the first question was on, you know, having, having considered that accountability is now here yes. for those involved in state capture, how yep. do you view these escalating attacks? Well, <laughs> Well, let me say that uh, I have seen in the past that when judges make certain decisions, performing their job in the way they are supposed to, in accordance with their oath of office, and uh, certain people in society don't like those decisions, they attack the judiciary, they insult the judiciary, they seek to intimidate the judiciary they, 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 in order to try and uh, I think they, are, they hope that uh, in the future, the judiciary would be scared of making decisions against them. I just want to, to say this, no amount of intimidation no bullying by anybody, and I mean anybody, is going to succeed in making the judiciary not to do its work in accordance with the oath of office that we as judges take. People can intimidate us, people can insult us, people can do whatever they want to do, but we will not deviate from doing our job in accordance with our oath of office. If that hurts certain people, so be it. We are in this job not to be popular, but to do a very important function in our constitutional democracy. We, we will not allow a situation where people want us to deviate from our oath of office by using these tactics. So, so I know that in the past that, that has happened and I think in the future it could happen. I don't know whether this is the start, but um, uh, I know that uh, when uh, judges make certain decisions, when certain issues are at stake, uh, certain people within society uh, 
uh, resort to attacking the judges and trying to discredit them. Uh, so, so those things could happen, and we will have to handle them as uh, as as we go along. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time? Thank you very much, Acting Chief Justice. I don't see any hands. I see Miss Whitson is still up. I don't think that she has follow up questions. Uh, I think we have come to the end of our of our media briefing, Acting Chief Justice. Uh, maybe you must save me here, Chief, Acting Chief Justice. I always get a request for you to do interviews. I know <laughs> that you would not be available to do any interviews, but I just want to place it on record that yes. uh, you would not be able to do any interviews after this. Yes. Um, and uh, all everything that you wanted to address has been covered here. Yes, no, uh, <clears throat> let me say that uh, it is a pity that I have had to leave the important work of preparing part two of the report of the commission in order to attend um, to these attacks by Mrs. Zulu. Uh, but I had to. So when we finish here, uh, I'll be going back to that. Uh, to continuing with that national assignment and um, won't be available for one-on-one um, -on -one interviews. Uh, you all know that uh, the part two of the report uh, is due quite soon. So we have got to be working on that. But I really appreciate um, the fact that so many um, members of the media made time to, to join us. I appreciate it very much. And I appreciate that whenever we invite them, even at short notice, they respond positively. And I take this opportunity to thank them for all their questions and for their attendance. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Chief Justice. Thank you, colleagues. That will be the end and goodbye. Goodbye.